Welcome to Monet Cafe, beautiful artistic friends. And I am now continuing with my beginner series, and this one is called Good Foundations. It's a little bit of an extension of the second video. I'm kind of using the same technique with these watercolor pencils um, to do an underpainting. And again, that's uh, really what I mean by good foundations. An underpainting is an excellent way to build a foundation of strength and beauty for your painting. You know, the Bible speaks of building your house on a rock and not on the sand. And so that's one nice thing about an underpainting is it gives you a great uh, guide and a strong foundation to build upon. So join me as I create this little painting from a lovely photograph. And it is from our very own Annette Meyer Atkins from our Monet Cafe Art Group. She has some beautiful photography in our photo reference uh, library or um, album in our group. Now, let me share with you some of the supplies that I'm using. For this particular painting, I'm using a piece of sanded UART pastel paper. Uh, many of you know about this paper already, but if you do not have access to this paper, can't afford this paper, I have plenty of other methods in other videos of how you can make your own pastel surface and save a little bit of money. I will also once again be using these watercolor pencils made by Arteza. Uh, I share a lot. They, they send me products to review and so I experiment with them and I found out from this set they work great on UART paper. Um, I am definitely going to be playing around with these more but for this particular painting you don't have to use uh, watercolor pencils for your underpainting. You can use watercolor, you can use pastels. Um, there are various ways that you can get this what I call a warm underpainting underneath your painting um, to to create the underpainting so um, you have multiple options if you've watched many of my videos you know I use all kinds of different techniques so really kind of use what you have uh, unless you want to get a set of these Arteza pencils um, they're relatively inexpensive and uh, I can provide a link within the video for you to click if you'd like to get some here is my setup on my easel and I just have the uh, once again the watercolor pencils I'm showing here how I've chosen mostly warm colors from the color wheel I do have a, a green that I use but I'm also I've got my UART paper taped up here I think it's like a six by I'm sorry an eight by six size and I'm going again from the no tan or the value study that I did in video number one of the beginner series it will be two videos before this one showing how it's a great idea to initially start out a value study working from your photograph. It, it basically uh, gets a great beginning and it simplifies things and uh, identifies the strong things about your painting uh, to create a great composition. Okay, go back and check out that video. But um, these next videos that I'm doing, I'm doing, I think, four or five of them from these um, notans, from these little value studies. And the difference in this, why I'm calling it a beginner video, is because I'm doing a lot of talking in it and I'm keeping it real time. And uh, the reason is I know you beginners, you, you like to hear what's going on. Um, it doesn't help you a lot if um, if I just speed it up and you just watch you know you need input <laughs> does anybody remember that movie short circuit oh my gosh what a cute movie that was the little robot he was like input input <laughs> that's how we are as uh, young artists I think um, and um, so I'm using um, the the darker one I used there first to get in the trees now I'm using that a little bit of a, a redder color or a magenta color uh, to get in some of those distant trees. I know you probably can't see the original photograph very well and I will put a clickable link in the description section of this video if you want to use this photograph. I did already ask Annette and um, she's she's good with that. So um, that would be a way that you can actually follow along with me with the same photograph. I have got to get my shaky easel taken care of. <laughs> I'm kicking it all the time. Um, now I'm adding um, a little bit more of that red on top of the, or, or magenta, on top of the purple uh, trees to kind of give it a little bit more depth and, and vibrancy of color. Uh, single colors are also often rather flat and boring. So it's often a good idea to kind of uh, give some layers of color for a, a real richness and a depth. Now I went a little lighter in value with this orange. Notice it's not as dark as that purple 
And the reason being is that things um, on the ground are typically lighter than trees that are vertical. Notice too that I'm doing um, strokes that indicate how the land is laying. It's giving a little bit of energy and movement to that ground and also emulating that hill or that rolling hill structure. I'm doing a few more darker tones in there to indicate, you know, maybe some grasses or some roots. Um, and you don't even have to get this um, nitpicky with an underpainting. I just was having fun. Um, now I'm using a lighter value further in the distance because things lighten up in the distance. If you've done one of these no-tans from the um, video, two beginner videos ago, you will um, know what I'm talking about when I'm talking about changing the values and, and how it works in nature. Um, I'm adding, notice in the photo, I kind of wanted to keep that yellowy tone of the sky there down close to the horizon. And I also wanted to really exaggerate how those clouds are just reaching towards the viewer, like they're just heavy over your head and coming towards you. And for the clouds, I am using a darker value than the, the yellow that's by the horizon. Notice in the reference image, those clouds are pretty dark. Um, they're not quite as dark in value as the land. The land's actually, the land is darker in that reference photo than in a lot of reference images because it's more like evening or either early morning. Um, but the clouds are not quite as dark as the land, but they, they're still a pretty dark value. So that's why I'm kind of using that pink. Again, notice that all the colors I'm using here are from the warmer side of the color wheel. Reason being, they make a beautiful underpainting, especially when you're going to be laying down a lot of greens or blues. They, they almost create a little vibration effect. Um, and I love it when some of the underpainting is kind of peeking through, not cover it all up with the green. It, it just makes your painting energetic, exciting, and beautiful. So I love a warm underpainting, and that's kind of the goal here that I'm doing. The difference in this video, um, or this painting, from the previous video, uh, where I did do a painting using the same kind of technique is I didn't put in any of the, the darker, really dark colors in this or a lot of other colors. And you're going to see how it affects as I add this alcohol. Like the last one, I'm using alcohol here um, to blend in this underpainting. Uh, you could use water. I like alcohol because it dries faster. And you're going to see why I'm loving this technique so much. Um, when you add the alcohol, it really just makes the colors really pop, okay? So this is the fun part. And one of the main things I like to stress about an underpainting is to keep it loose and flowy. If it drips and uh, moves around a bit in unexpected places, just kind of go with it. You know, as long as you've got the, the core or the, the basics of it um, pretty correct, um, the worst thing you can do is get too tight too quickly. Um, I do, again, I focus a lot on make that energy, like those clouds, bring them forward, make that land um, uh, have some sweeping motion to it, and uh, break out of the boundaries of the trees being so tight. I still need to loosen up even more. I, I feel like um, I am just still a budding, growing artist myself, um, but uh, just definitely focus on having fun and keeping it loose. All right, I'll add a little music for the rest of the underpainting, which isn't long, and I'll come back in for some commentary when I start adding the pastels.
Okay, now for the pastel application. And if you hear some bumping around, that would be my dog and cat in the studio running around playing with each other. It's so cute. Some of you may remember the little kitty I rescued from literally my front yard. Um, I named her Dusty because she likes hanging out in my studio. And no, I don't let her breathe my pastel dust. Thank you, all you wonderful pet owners out there and cat lovers. I keep her safe when I'm painting. I don't have her in the studio. And uh, she uh, basically adopted my dog as her mom. She even tried to nurse him. <laughs> <laughs> and he was very, t she'd grab a little piece of skin or fur under his belly, and he was very tolerant of that, bless his heart. But they're goofing off in my studio right now. And if you hear some music, it's my husband outside playing his music while he, while he tries to build us a garage. We're still getting things together and trying to build things after the flooding of our house in 2017. Um, but let me get back to talking about pastel. So enough of that. I will talk about what I'm doing here, but real quickly I wanted to share a little bit about the varieties of pastels. I'm using uh, a lot for this painting some of the Giro pastels that I had uh, reviewed a few videos back. I do love these pastels, um, but I do realize that um, they're great because they're not too hard, not too soft. They're very versatile. They're a great pastel for beginners. However, I realize they are expensive. All pastels are expensive. Um, so I had a great suggestion from one of our um, viewers or subscribers here on YouTube and uh, a comment. And she asked if I could do a video where I share exactly the pastels I'm using. And that would be hard with my studio set because they're all kind of intermingled. I'd have to go, okay, oh, well, this one's a unison and what color is it? And um, so I thought, what a great excuse to buy a new set of pastels. So I thought I'd buy a set of some that are good for beginners and more affordable. Those would be either Rembrandt's. That was my first set of pastels was some Rembrandt's. They're fairly hard on the hard soft scale for pastels, um, but they are uh, more affordable. And I also always recommend getting half sticks when you can. A lot of companies sell sets that instead of a whole stick, they sell a half stick. You can get twice the amount of pastels for the same money. So Rembrandt, I believe, does this. Um, and um, the disadvantage about Rembrandt's is they are harder. So uh, harder pastels typically aren't the best to put on at the end of a painting. They don't have the, the um, buttery or um, brilliance and color that the softer ones do. So once you get a lot of layers on, harder pastels just don't show up as good typically. Um, they're great for blending though. If like when I did the underpainting at the beginning of this, I could have used a harder pastel such as a new pastel, NU pastel or a Rembrandt and just kind of uh, blocked in with some of those warm colors and even use the watercolor or I mean the, sorry, the water or the alcohol or just blend it in. Um, so they work great for that. Um, another good beginner set is Mount Vision. Uh, you get a fairly large pastel for the money. I don't think they sell them in half, half sticks, but they're pretty affordable and they're not as hard as Rembrandt, but they're, they're soft. Um, not some of the softest ones, but they're a really great beginner set too. And it's so great because I happen to have um, Mount Vision Pastel right in my backyard. I've done a video that's on, if you go in the past videos, it's been a while, but I actually did a tour of their facility and met the owner and he was nice enough to make some pastels for us and show us all the different sets. So that's a really great set too. So I'm gonna try to buy a set of pastels and use exclusively that set, showing you the colors and everything, leading you through a really, really good beginner video. Okay, now let me get to what I'm actually doing here. You see that I've laid, started laying down some color. For the clouds, I went ahead and, and went with that uh, blue, a little bit of blue, a little bit of purple. Uh, they weren't too different in value. That's kind of a neat way to work with clouds too. Um, you don't want to go real stark differences in value. Um, I did want to keep that yellowy um, background right over the horizon kind of light shining, but you want to reflect that up even higher in the sky too. So that's why I have some of that yellow. If you look at the reference photo, you can see there is um, a little bit of that yellow showing through. It's going to do that, okay? It's also going to reflect down on the land a little bit too. So I'm just basically focusing more on value um, than anything right now. 
Um, oh, and now I want to point out, I'm using, a lot of you ask, it's just a piece of pipe foam insulation, and it's great for blending. I've heard people say they um, also use pool noodles, you know those long noodly looking things kids play with in the pools? I've heard those are good for blending, but this can, the pipe foam insulation can be bought at. Uh, if you're in the States, Lowe's or Home Depot, but most hardware stores, I think it's literally used to insulate your pipes if you're in cold weather so um, or for other purposes. So I'm blending the clouds because I wanted to take that um, chunkiness away from the strokes, and clouds usually are kind of wispy. Um, but I just kind of turn it and move it, and again, I'm trying to keep those clouds looking like they're coming towards us. That's kind of the energy and the momentum of the painting but see how adding that little bit of pink in there with it um, just kind of kept that consistency um, that I've got going with the underpainting there all right so now I'm going to work on my darks we know the trees anything vertical is typically darker and so I'm going to get my darkest dark in and then I'm going to um, use a, a little bit of different colors instead of just one dark color for the trees. I mean, obviously, I'm going to come back in later and add maybe some. I don't. I can't remember if I even add any greens on this one at the end because this is more of an evening scene. Those trees are really far away. The sun is behind them, so we're kind of seeing the dark side of the trees. Um, but I still add a few more colors so that it's not just that you know one um, kind of flat, boring color and. Um, Getting the darks in early on is really good. I've already got um, not totally my lightest lights, but but close with some of those colors. If you notice, the scene is, uh, if you look at the photograph, it's a pretty dark scene. Again, either evening or early morning. And the lightest thing, if you squint your eyes, is obviously that horizon skyline right there above the, uh, above the horizon. Okay, now is where I'm adding in some of those pinks again. I really like to play around with color. A lot of you guys have probably noticed that. And I don't always do like the typical greens and blues and all of that. Um, and you can get creative with color if you get value right. Now I'm incorporating some of that. Uh, it's a, as you can see, when I, when I put it down in the foreground, you can see actually it is quite dark. It didn't look quite as dark on top of that dark color I used on the trees. But you want to um, go ahead, if you have a color, go ahead and use it wherever else you can in the painting. Um, now I'm adding some of those background trees. I'm exaggerating this. You don't see it as much in the photograph, but in the photograph you can even see those trees real far away. They're a lot lighter in value than the foreground trees. But in art, sometimes we accentuate these things for impact and for beauty. Um, now I'm using a little bit of a darker blue. Again, this is evening. Or, or morning, whatever. It's where the sun is behind all of these things. So we're getting the cooler colors. Again, I apologize for my bouncy easel. And next time before I paint, I need to put a, a note on my easel saying, fix me before you do another video. All right, now I wanted to go ahead and uh, intensify that orange. Um, again, uh, borrowing Karen Margulis's expression, laying down some dirt. Um, your greens are going to look much better if you put some dirt down underneath them. You know, and you just think of it like a garden, you know. Um, so see, already that's just got a nice moody feel to it. All right, I'm getting, um, I know the land has some um, some lines in it, uh, per, I guess that's the right word, for grasses that are growing. So I'm just getting a little more of that dark. It's going to make that foreground feel closer and the background feel further by adding some darks in the foreground. Um, so I'm just continuing. Now you notice I'm getting finally getting to the greens here. And they're going to be much more interesting because of the colors that I've laid down underneath. And by the way, I am keeping a light touch. I get a little lighter when I um, lighter with my touch uh, when I move back in a painting because the values are typically um, a little bit lighter. I don't press quite as hard. Now I really liked. Um, you can't see it as good here. There were some of these greens that looked a little more brilliant in the photograph, and it was like some of that yellow from the this clouds in the sky was kind of reflecting down on the grass a little bit and that was just like a really neat grassy green color there um, and adding a little more blues and things in the clouds here and I think I'm just gonna let you guys watch a little bit I did want to say sometimes I add a little bit more energy by making more linear strokes in the clouds I, in other words I kind of blend them to begin with and then I may make a few more squiggly marks you know, to kind of show some of the edges. You don't want to overdo that. 
So you guys enjoy while I paint a bit more and I will pop back in for some comments towards the end.
Often at the end of the painting or a painting, I like to add a little pizzazz color. I never like to overdo the color, but just a little hint of something like this bright pink, just a little bit here and there, just makes some interest, you know. And I wanted to point out that I'm using, there's a little teeny sliver of a background field, kind of almost behind that hill, and it needs to be a little bit of a lighter value because it's further away, and it needs to be cooler in color temperature. So I just cooled off uh, that green that was in the foreground and used more of a little bit of a a turquoisey color and I think I just add a few hints here and there so um, getting ready to wrap this up but I want to tell you guys I am so grateful for it. many of you are commenting that you would love to support this channel and I can't tell you how much that blesses me um, I it is hard I'll be honest it is hard for me to bring these videos often um, you guys know about just life challenges but financially sometimes it's a little challenging many of you know my computer crashed not too long ago I just had to buy a new MacBook Pro uh, there's so many ideas and things I have in mind that I want to do to improve the videos one of them is a new type of lighting for the studio um, and all those things add up so when you guys say things about wanting to support the channel it blesses me so uh, many of you have got a suggestion of I can't really do any more time with a Patreon account um, to give more time, but I may create one that just uh, allows people who want to support to support. So we'll see about that. Give me your comments on that. Um, I'd love to hear what you think about that. Um, always I want to try to keep the videos free, but maybe voluntary support would be uh, okay. So thank you guys for making Monet Cafe so special for me. And as always, happy painting.